All right, well, welcome everybody. Today is September 21st. I want to welcome you to our monthly Coaching in Context webinar series. I'm Dr. Carrie Arnold. I'm the Program Director for Evidence-Based Coaching here at Fielding Graduate University. This is our give back to the coaching community. We offer free webinars el eligible for ICF CEUs. And today I'm very excited to have Dr. Laura Hauser here. She is part of Fielding's alumni, uh, our graduate, sorry, let me try that again. She's <laughs> part of Fielding's associate faculty team within evidence-based coaching. We keep changing our titles around. Um, she has been part of Fielding for the very beginning. She was part of cohort one. Co and cohort two, actually, cohort, cohort two. two. And for yep. those who are familiar with Fielding's <laughs> evidence-based coaching program, we just enrolled cohort 48. Yay. So that gives you a sense of, of Laura's history with our program. She also has a PhD at Fielding. And the topic today is, is a nuanced topic on coaching supervision. And so I'm gonna do a quick poll and I'm gonna ask you to answer a question and tell us how familiar you are with supervision. And that'll kind of give us a sense of how we want to sort of drive our, our webinar today. We've got the results coming in. <laughs> Survey says, <That's> so exciting. <laughs> well, you know, it looks like um, they're still coming in. It looks like it's 30, 30, 30. Um, about 40% are not familiar with supervision. 35% are sort of familiar and 25% are very familiar. So Laura, that might give you a sense, a little bit of your audience today. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very, very helpful. Uh, and it's it's also all, always a welcoming and, and exciting to see, you know, kind of different levels of, of, ex, ex, uh, of experience on a particular topic. And, um, you know, we could we could spend, you know, pretty much a whole year just on team coaching and supervision. And <laughs> so we have uh, just short of a, an hour here today. So um, I think what we'll do is just go ahead and, and provide an, an overview. And in particular, um, you know, so I'll, I'll go ahead and give a, a brief overview then since we, we have uh, some people who, who aren't as familiar with, with supervision. So let's talk a little bit. I have some slides uh, built in, some I was gonna skip over, some I can keep. So. <clears throat> Your poll carry has been been helpful um, for that. So um, that the main focus here today is is around uh, this 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 newer field, if you will, of you know the advanced um, work of coaching teams. Um, but with that, so we're not going to be going into how to coach today. That's like a whole nother course and program. Um, which you can reach out to me about and be glad to, to, to uh, talk to you about that. Um, but it also is, what are the kinds of dilemmas that oftentimes come up when you are coaching teams? Because coaching teams, uh, compared to coaching individuals, is indeed um, um, more complex than coaching individuals. So um, with that in mind, then, um, feel free to, to reach me if you want to reach out to www.leadershipstrategies.com. Um, so I, I do do believe that uh, you know mindsets matter. A coaching mindset matters, and a team coaching mindset matters. So um, you know, with with that in mind, I'd love to to hear from you. With you being here today, um, what is it about coaching teams plus supervision um, drew you to today's session? Or maybe it's something else. Maybe it's just to hang out with each other. <laughs> Maybe it just shows up on your calendar each month, regardless of what the topic is. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and, and put that in chat. So, you know, what is it about today? Or what do you hope to, to learn? You can see some of those coming in. Okay, not seeing anything yet. There we go. Now we got some coming in. Okay, learn about what uh, team coaching is all about, what coaching supervision means, haha, and how to implement it 
uh, Suzanne, we'll, we'll need to have longer conversations for that, but hopefully this will, uh, uh, you know, uh, stretch stretch the, the thinking here. Have new perspective on team coaching, uh, how to learn something new for supervision. That is exactly it, to hang out and soak up some knowledge. Fantastic. All right, well, let's let's do that together and let's let's have, have some fun with this. So overall, in terms of, of out, outcomes, <clears throat> let's uh, to set some context uh, up front to you know, talk about the complexity of coaching teams compared to coaching individuals. And uh, then from there, uh, for the, the meat of our, our time together, um, I'd like to share with you a case, case study to um, hear about a very you know, complex um, team coaching um, request for an, an engagement and how, how supervision can really help you navigate the challenges when you have a multi-stakeholder team coaching engagement. And when you're working in organizations, it's difficult to not have a multi-stakeholder, right? Or not, not have you know, multiple uh, stakeholders. So um, let's talk about um, you know, what dilemma came up here. It's, my, it's a real situation uh, that came up for me. <clears throat> um, talk about the dilemma that came up. And um, fortunately I was, you know, Right, I was already in in supervision and uh, had a, a supervision session coming up right away, so it was incredibly helpful to me. So I want to uh, get your thoughts and ideas. What would you do in in this dilemma and share with you some of what I learned that helped me that hopefully helped can help you as well. Um, and then you know, let's also take a look at the then given all of that, the benefits of supervision, uh, how it truly is an essential professional development. Um, you know. Um, opportunity for you in your practice when you're coaching in the context of teams in the workplace. So that's where, where we're headed. Okay, so uh, in terms of uh, defining teams, there are many different ways to define teams um, and um, teams in the, the workplace. Um, we don't have, didn't include a definition in the, the um, deck here for you today, but I had someone who, who asked. But in terms of teams in the workplace, teams um, are people who come together for a common purpose, a common goal, right? There's something that the organization needs for them to, to accomplish together. And a real key piece is around interdependencies that they are interdependent upon each other to accomplish that for the organization for which this, this team, this group of people who have come together to accomplish for the organization. So that's a, a real key, key piece. All right, um, and um, another, another question around, do they all report to the same immediate manager? Um, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Okay, so it can be an uh, intact team that you report into and um, you know, an individual manager, if you will, or for the case study I'm gonna be sharing with you here today, um, uh, this case study was a matrix situation where you had people from multiple parts of the organization reporting into this general manager for which this, uh, this, this um, matrix team was responsible for delivering a key new product for the business. So it can show up in, in many different ways. <clears throat> All right, great, okay. So uh, in terms of complexity of coaching teams compared to coaching individuals, you can see just from the conversation we've been having so far and the questions that have been coming up, indeed, uh, it, is, it is more uh, complex. So um, I'm gonna share a visual with you here as a way to be con considering it. Um, one way to be thinking about coaching, coaching teams is this whole notion about coaching the spaces between the connections. Now that might sound strange. So let me just go into that a little bit more. So let's say, for example, in terms of coaching a team, the team, the coach will coach the team team, right, that consists of individual members. So that might be, for example, if it's an intact team, or it might be a matrix team, etc. That's different than, I remember uh, in, in doing my research and um, 
one of my team coaches said to me, you know, this piece around contracting is so important um, because I ran into a dilemma one time that I contracted with, uh, with the, uh, you know, with the, the vice president. He says, well, you know, this executive coaching has been so helpful. Can you coach my team too? And so she says, well, tell me more about it. And um, they were hopping on a, a flight to go over to Europe to kick off this new team. He sat down beside her on the plane and said, I am so glad that you're, you know, going to be with me and my team because, you know, Jane really needs help. And all of a sudden she realized, oh, he thinks I'm going to be coaching the individual, all the individual people. Like he hasn't gotten, gotten it yet, even though we've contracted, we've talked about it, <laughs> um, that I'm going to be coach, I'm going to be with you and the team and coaching you collectively as a team. So this whole piece around, you know, defining coaching and team coaching and what does that mean and what are the roles are really important, whether it be an intact team or, or other teams. <clears throat> and so just know, you know, that the, con the context, you know, Peter Hawkins, for example, one of my supervisors over the years, you know, says ABC, always be contracting. Because no matter how much upfront you think that you're on the same page, you know, there's, there's always assumptions. So with that, then whoever it is that you, you know, whatever the entity is that you're coaching, um, one of the things in terms of my research, and then also 30 years of practice and, and, you know, coming, I have a bias, of course, being an ODist, you know, and teaching in Pepperdine's uh, master's uh, program um, for, for a while, um, that, What's also really important for us to be aware of is that we're working with in the system. So the team, so let's say the team is over here, the team has all these connections, right? And so it's not just the team itself, but there also are some interactions or interdependencies with other people or other parts of the organization in order to accomplish what, what they need to accomplish and to help others accomplish. And then there's also the external environment, et cetera. So we'll come back to when we get into the, the case study, we'll come back to this notion about coaching, not only the, the, the team, but it's the, the spaces between its connections, okay? Now that kind of sometimes can go against. Uh, so Carrie, cover your ears. <laughs> can go, go against, uh, for example, you know, what we've, we've taught in the EBC program uh, for many years, which is, you know, you only coach the person that's in the room. Well, the person that's in the room lives within, is nested within systems, okay? So they are connected. So you can, ha can have the conversation with people or with the team about you know, this notions of interdependencies and influences um, et cetera. So we need to be taking the, the system into account. All right. And if things come up, uh, Carrie, I, know, I love how you're so active. Thank you. ABC always be contracting. I got my chat box um, sitting on my other screen. So if there's something for me to attend to, please let me know. <clears throat> so um, with that, then um, it, it's very clear to me and through the, the research, and I would imagine uh, for you sitting here as well, so that coaching teams compared to coaching individuals requires an additional, an additional set of team specific knowledge base, competencies and tools, okay? Um, now, <clears throat> having said that, I'll have some people say, well, you know, can I just go straight to coaching teams and not do the base training for, you know, for coaching and having a, a coaching mindset. And I said, no, you need the foundation of a coaching mindset and the knowledge and the skills <clears throat> to bring that into play then um, to then move to the advanced piece, the advanced uh, knowledge, competence, and tools. 
Um, and if you, you don't know, I'm glad to, to share that um, we have now been, I've been working with the International Coach Federation for the last, I don't know, it's about two and a half years. I was tapped on the shoulder along with some other, you know, experts and people who have kind of shaped team, team coaching um, over the, the decades for our research and practice. We now have a set of um, um, core competencies. So if you go onto the, the website for the ICF, you have the, the list of, um, so they, they have a set of core competencies. They've done a beautiful job of tracking then showing the core competencies, overall base ground core competencies that we all know, then next to it then are the um, um, you know, advanced subset for the context of coaching teams. So if you haven't taken a look at that, uh, you'll, you'll want to do that. And <clears throat> more recently than this year, um, the work has continued to um, develop a um, performance exam for team coaching. So uh, I helped pilot that in, back in May, uh, myself, as well as, again, this uh, small co cohort of uh, you know, S SMEs. And um, now we have the, the first cohort of certified, it's called advanced, it's a new credential. So I have a, a new, new credential called advanced team, advanced certificate in team coaching, ACTC. Yeah. So uh, take a look at that. Uh, it should be also on the, the website. So as you can see, this is really exploding, <clears throat> this whole field of coaching teams and, and organizations. So, well, let's go ahead um, and move on then to, let's see. Let's just uh, talk uh, just briefly. Um, these are a couple of slides that I thought we might bypass, but I'll go ahead and mention them here as, as well, since some people are, are new, newer to, to coaching supervision. So here's one, one definition um, by uh, Pass Moore and uh, McGoldrick back in 2009, who talked about you know, supervision as a process <clears throat> whereby the coach and the supervisor reflect reflect together on the coach's practice. So it's, but the, the practice is reflecting on, not the, so much, it's not the business practice. Yeah, they're reflecting on what is going on for the coach in relation to, um, you know, the, the situation at hand. So it's a way to help the, the coach and the supervisor have kind of super sight which has also uh, more recently been called supervision. And um, in, in Europe, uh, it's, you know, it's been around for, for quite a while. It's a bit, bit newer here uh, in the, the States, but it's uh, definitely um, more and more people are seeing the, the, the value of uh, coaching supervision. And, uh, you know, Diane, if you want to maybe jump in on this or Carrie as well, Feel free <clears throat> as, um, as supervisors yourself, certified supervisors, as we, we all are here. Uh, so uh, um, I also want to put up here two, two, two other definitions. There are many, but these, these two are widely accepted across the globe. So the ICFs, as well as the EMCC. And I highlighted a few words where you can see, see where you know, it's, it's similar. It's this whole notion about... Um, uh, being with your supervisor in this collaborative learning space. So it is very collaborative. So it's not mentoring coming in and saying, you know, here's how you did it. This is what you did, did well. You know, here's the core competencies that you, you did well. Here's how, you know, you can consider um, doing it differently. Instead, it's a collaborative and very reflective dialogue that takes place for the, the development uh, and, and benefit, you know, both of the, the, the coach, um, their clients and their, their organization. So it's a very different experience. Um, Diane, Carrie, anyone else want to share a little bit more? Yeah, uh, Laura, thanks so much <clears throat> for doing this for us. Uh, the things that just always jump out to me on supervision is the collaborative learning, 
and the reflective dialogue. And learning as a supervisor to help create the reflective dialogue takes some different skills than coaching, mentoring, or anything else that we might do in a one-to-one -one situation. So I was challenged by the process. I love the process. And I always find that it's helpful. Always growing and learning though, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Going and learning. Thank you, Diane. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, much more to uh, to be be said there. Um, so you know, today it's like we have an a whole ocean and a and a teacup, right? <laughs> so let's go ahead then, and, and uh, so I hope that that provides a, you know a little more more base on uh, and clarity around supervision. So let's go ahead and move on to our uh, outcome number two. So let's kind of move into a, a real case study um, and you know, learn about how supervision um, through this, this case study in, in particular you know, helped me navigate the, the challenge of a multi-stakeholder team coaching engagement. Um, and one of the things that I, I want to offer uh, to you, whether you're, you're newer to coaching, newer to team coaching, or newer to supervision, that no matter how many years, I mean, it's been decades that um, I have been working uh, with teams, uh, literally that I've been coaching um, and coaching managers before the ICF was even formed um, and um, running, running a, a course for First Interstate Bank, designing and, and running it for managers on how to coach um, their, their people. So no matter how long or how short you have been coaching or coaching teams, supervision, it's invaluable, invaluable. So um, I'm glad to, to share with you through this case study, a dilemma that came up for me um, and how, you know, I was really in need of supervision. <laughs> I'm so grateful uh, that that was already scheduled. So um, let me <clears throat> share with you some of the, the background um, and um, I'll you know, give you some of the, the backstory about briefly how it came about and that the meeting then with uh, uh, the, the sponsor and through how during that, that meeting, a, an ethical dilemma came up for me that then I took to supervision. Um, I was going to break you, put you into breakout rooms, but Terry and I, uh, Terry and I thought maybe we'd maybe just go ahead and have us all stay together here and uh, uh, instead of going to breakout rooms to talk about the dilemma, what would you do? We can just do it during, you know, over chat. And also some people might want to come off of mic and we'll do it that way. That might help our time as well for today. Okay. All right. So here is uh, the uh, brief, brief background. This is an organization who I had, uh, had worked with uh, previously I started uh, was brought in to work with the uh, new new chairman and um, his presidents. He had three presidents of three different divisions, and then from there had like senior vice presidents and um, and vice presidents. So um, helped get them aligned and kicked off together, kind of forming as as a new new team, if you will. From that, got to know uh, you know quite a few of the, the leaders in the organization, and then it just naturally evolved then that, um, you know, I would periodically receive a call and say, hey, can you come with work with, you know, me and my team? Um, so this is another situation then where I did re receive a call. In this, this case, I received a call from the uh, human resources business partner, you know, asking me if I had the, the bandwidth to take on a, another team, um, that there's a, a general manager and uh, his team of this responsible for this new new product uh, for the organization who was really, really struggling. So I should, you know, sure, be glad to, to talk with the general manager and, and let's, you know, let's see what's up and, you know, how I, I might be able to be helpful. Um, and of course, just because we're asked to take on a new team coaching engagement doesn't mean we take it on. We always want to find out what's going on first and see if it's a good fit, et cetera. So I met with the general manager and he let me know that they're a highly matrix team, like we had talked about a short while ago. And he says, but you know, we're really, we're like, we're a team of teams. He says, we need to go from being all stars to an all-star team. 
we haven't gotten to being an all-star team yet. Now we have a real clear business plan um, and the goal, we know the goal you know, from our key stakeholders, what the business needs from, me, from us is to grow the business, to double the revenue to $30 million over the next three years. But he says, the problem is that we have fallen behind on our goals, significantly fallen behind. There's a lot of disconnects and there's a lot of finger pointing and a lot of blame. Everybody's blaming each other as to why it is that we're behind. Um, he says, so the team needs to get aligned as soon as possible. And so you know, I said, well, okay. And so how can I help? So um, he said, you know, I'd like for you to come, you know, help us, un you know, understand what's going on. I'd love maybe for you to do some interviews, really help us understand our, our pain, pain points um, so that then we can get together uh, and we can, you know, help remove these, these barriers and align our resources to get back on, on track in order to migrate over to this, this new, new platform for this new um, um, for this new product for the business. So, um, so we came up with an overall general plan as to how we might go about doing that. The next step then was to go ahead and meet with the, the sponsor, who was the person who was really bringing me in um, through the HR business partner to, to talk with the general manager. So I um, had a call with the, the sponsor and um, he expressed, you know, he was pretty much in alignment with what the GM said. So that was a good sign. Um, so he expressed some similar concerns about the progress that the team hasn't been making, but he made it sound even more dire. I could hear it in his voice and his words. Then something came up that was a surprise to me. I hadn't heard from the GM. Or he said, the GM has lost confidence of the executive board to lead this critical business imperative. So that's why I want you to come in and coach the general manager and the team and get them aligned and back on track. That is of utmost importance. It's like, whoo, really significant. All right. So, you know, we talked about, a, you know, a plan for moving forward um, to help provide that support. But then, now, wait, there's more. Here's where the dilemma comes in. So we're literally getting ready to hang up from the video call. Just as we're finishing, he says, oh, by the way, oh, by the way, there's one more thing for you to know that is confidential. No one knows yet. I'm going like, no, yeah. so I was curious, yes. And he says, I'm in the second rounds of interviews to replace the general manager. So I took a deep breath. It's like, you know, I hadn't heard that when I talked with the general manager. And he says, well, he doesn't know. Now, you know, so I'm like skating and, you know, I think I'm ice skating, but suddenly I'm, I'm uh, you know, in sand. <laughs> so, um, you know, he says, well, you know, so, you know, got, got to go. And yeah, let's, let's have, you know, we'll do a follow-up call. So that's then what I'm left with. So he, you know, so I, I, just before we hung up, I did ask him that the question about, is it possible that the general manager could stay in this role through the support of res other resources? Uh, and you know, including coaching. And he said, no, the decision's already been made to move them out. There's no going back. Um, you know, the board has sanctioned this and this is how we're going. So I said, okay, gotta, gotta run. And thank you for helping us with this. So now I'm in this, this bind. And my immediate reaction was, I can't ethically, I can't coach this general manager when he doesn't know, you know, that. What, no, so, so basically I, what's happened is that I've become the holder of the secret. So how can I coach the general manager when I have critical secret information that he doesn't have? So my question then to you is what's your immediate reaction? If we could start hearing from some of those, what's your immediate reaction?
So Laura, I put the question in chat. How can Thank we coach? You. How can we coach when we are the holder of a secret our client does not have? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Taylin. Hi, Taylin. Hi, this is a juicy one. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is. I'm just, wow. I'm like, the immediate reaction for me is, I mean, what is there to coach? If he's going to be gone, like if he's going to be moved out, you're coaching someone in this particular environment with these systems, right? And this role with the team, and then that's going to leave. So what is the purpose? I mean, and that's what I'm wondering, like, well, what do, what do they expect your purpose to be in this space? <laughs> uh, still, still to go forward. They still, the, the sponsor, for example, still wants, wants to know, um, you know, so what's really going on. So yes, I want you to do interviews. Um, let's find out what's going on. What are the pain, pain points? What's working? What's not working? And, you know, it's like, I don't know when this next general manager is actually going to come in, but then we, we do, we need to have an offsite. We need to, you know, get the whole team together and we've got to fig figure this, this thing out. Yeah. So that's where, where he's coming from. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the, you know, Shelly. Hi. Hey, Shelly. Good to hear you. See you. Uh, yeah. So that was the, the purpose, the purpose of the, the coaching. So it was to support the general manager as he's struggling, right. <clears throat> and trying to work with this, this team more effectively. Uh, and the team coaching was just for that to get the team aligned. Let's find out what's working, what's not working, and um, you know, let's let's reset. So it's for the the team to have a a reset. Yeah. yeah, I think it's more of a rhetorical question. Like from them, it seems very inauthentic, right? Because like you said, you have the secret that it changes the dynamic of how you would approach. For me, like as a coach, approach this whole scenario, right? Because it's yeah. really gathering data to understand what the pain points are so that you can prepare the future leader to come into the team. But like, that's the thing that's not being said. Yes, yes, yep, yep. Secrets, secrets there and the secrets being held held by the, the coach. Yep, thank you. So that, that was the, the, the dilemma for, for me in that situation. Yeah. Uh, Hi, this is Kelly. Can I maybe add a thought to that? Sure. Um, so I think my reaction also, in addition to everything that's been said, is it feels to me like there's not adequate goal alignment to be able to effectively coach, right? The coachee's goals are going to be different, right? Because that person is assuming that their goal is to be effective in their current role. And obviously the sponsor and that person's manager, their goal is different. The goal is to effectively remove right that person well, well actually that the goal the goal was to help the general manager be more effective because right. because the work still needs to get done so actually they they were aligned but there was just one piece that that the general manager didn't have i guess i would argue though if the decision has been made at a higher level right that that general manager is going to be removed from the role on the surface there appears to be goal alignment but the reality is there's not alignment, at least from my perception. Um, you know, they may think, right, they're yeah. going in the same direction, but yeah. reality yeah. is pushing them in different directions. Does right. that make sense? It, it does make sense. Yes. And so while the general manager is still there, they do want the general manager to be more effective. So yeah. that's part of it for the purpose of having the team be sure. more effective. So that's, that's like the, the, the end game, right? Yeah, so thank you for that. All right, uh, what else do we have here? Yeah, does not put the coach in a, what did I have here? Uh, in a situation of losing trust with the team when the team realizes what is happening, thus reducing their effectiveness. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, there, there can be fallout, right? And consequences uh, by moving in this direction. And Marsha, why does the team need to align with the manager that is on his way out? It's not as much aligning with the manager. It's more about helping the, the, the request was helping the general manager be more effective in helping the team align and do its work that's required. Okay. So it's not as much as aligning with the manager, um, but just to get them all, all on the same page, going the same direction. So help the, the, 
the, the coach, but the primary focus was on the team. I mean, help the general manager, but the primary focus was on helping the team, okay? All right, so uh, next question then. So what, so what would you do? So now you're the keeper of the secret. So what would you do next? So Laura, there were a couple of comments. Um, I would press for transparency or wouldn't take on the project. Mm -hmm. um, what is the purpose of the engagement really? So maybe questioning that. Um, mm -hmm. One suggested, you know, there's still growth for the person as he exits and how the team yeah. makes that transition. Mm -hmm. uh, another asked, the goal is to coach the team and align the team to achieve the sponsor's goals, right? So all of these are good questions, which hey, supports uh, the whole topic of your webinar, which is around supervision. Exactly, exactly. Yes, yeah. So thanks, thanks for uh, for bring, bringing the, the additional pieces in there. And and I'll just just hi highlight one, um, you know, that was said. Um, someone brought up, you know, that I I would press for transparency or not take on the engagement. That's exactly where I was. So I'm thinking how so how to have that conversation. And I I got to tell you, it's just I I I wasn't sleeping at night. So I'm so glad that I had like supervision within the next two days. Because <laughs> it really troubled me a lot, you know. So yeah, so you know. How, ethically, you know, how can I, I take this on when I know, how can I coach the, the general manager and the team knowing the general manager's, you know, going to be moved on. So <clears throat> just in time then, you know, since I feel like I'm walking this tightrope, right? <laughs> so we've already covered in this situation, what's your reaction and what, what would you do? So just in time supervision coming up uh, was incredibly helpful. So um, a few things that, that came out that you know, I was, was reminded of um, by, by my supervisor that was so helpful um, were, were two, two key things that came out for me. Um, one was the importance of reframing. And I, you know, I love that, that, that Peter Hawkins, you know, one of the things he says is that the coach's job as we know, is not to tell or even perhaps to ask, but to reframe the challenge. Isn't that an interesting concept? Reframe the challenge. Help the client, you and the client, reframe, right? The challenge or the, the dilemma, if you will, and then orchestrate how to collectively address that challenge. So I'll, I'll share with you then what it is that, that I did do that, that was a reframe for me. Um, I'll, I'll share that with you in a moment. Um, and then also this whole notion again that I brought up at the very beginning about the importance of coaching the space between the key stakeholders. In this case, it just started with coaching the space between me and the vice president, right? That's where I needed to, I needed to go back and start again, right? So to, to do some coaching within that space between the VP uh, and my, myself, the VP meaning the, the sponsor, right? So that we can be on that, the same page and, and you know, have, have transparency, if you will. Then also between the, the sponsor and the general manager, then the general manager and the team and you know, other stakeholders that were also involved uh, in this as well, which I won't go into um, uh, here today. So, you know, two key, key, key concepts um, that are, are there um, for us to take a look at. So um, in terms of, of reframing, I first had to do a reframe in my own mind because I was, I, was, I was deeply concerned about me and how I could not take this on. So I reframed it in a different way about me having a concern for the sponsor for the vice president, it's reframing my concern for him about the implications of um, not including the general manager and moving forward with an engagement and how that might actually shoot him in the foot. So that's how the, the, the conversation shifted. So I basically entered the conversation 
by acknowledging, you know, it's a it's a tough situation, and you know that I'm I'm on your side. It's like I'm here to help you. Um, and I understand that there's an urgent business need to fill the gap. And I understand it's imperative to get the team aligned and motivated to address the business challenge. And you need to get everybody involved to close the gap. So then I reframe the problem more as my concern for him and an organizational problem. Um, and shared with him um, how there could be a possibility that he could shoot himself in the foot because if we move forward and say we do these these interviews and people openly share their pain points and what's going on right so they are trusting that information is going to be held confidential which it would be but with that then um it, fast forwarding it so we've gone through the interviews, you know, we've collected the data, identified that the themes, you know, shared that back with you, shared it with the team, general manager, we make plans moving forward. And then, the, then suddenly it's announced that the general manager is gone. What's that going to do in terms of potential break of trust of you? Potential break of trust with the organization. Uh, you know, trust that the break trust that the next time people are asked to be open and honest, are they going to be thinking, am I going to be next? So through reframing the conversation and the or the, the challenge, reframing the, the challenge and helping him think through potential implications, he came about on his own to say, yes, you know, I, I do need to talk to the general manager and I'm going to do that that very, very soon. So conversation then became about coaching with him about, you know, how he can be inclusive in that way. Um, you know, how to include the, the, the general manager in the process um, of, um, you know, helping bring in a new gener general manager, helping with that transition. Um, so there's more to be said there, but I'm, I'm mindful of our, of our time. So um, let me uh, just kind of stop there and see what's going through through your your mind in the the moment um, as we did a reframe here. You know, Laura Yami put in a, a really good comment that I think might be summarizing what you're saying. Where to coach the team and not the problem or the secret, you weren't necessarily coaching the secret, you were reframing the challenge. Yeah. Um, I think it's a lovely way yeah. of reframing. Yeah, nice, nice summary, Yummy. Thank you for that, yeah. Yeah, and like you said, Carrie, our work is to help the client reframe and you know challenge. Um, okay, well, that's what I said, but yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Okay, and you know, Josie, you captured what I, what I was thinking and, so, so that's, that's just that's the, the beauty of, of uh, supervision uh, and knowing that coaching teams requires an additional set of team-specific knowledge, competencies, tools, um, and supervision. So um, with that, just overall, what, what do you see? Let's go ahead and put into to chat or come off mic. What do you see as the benefits of, of supervision um, you know, in, in this case or you know, just overall? Just thinking about your own work, whether you're working with individuals or working with teams, you know, what, what do you see are the, the benefits of supervision? Um, I'd like to, to share my thoughts around that. Thank you. So Jen. I think that the benefits of the supervision is it allows someone who is independent and can be objectionable um, to hear what the challenge is for that coach. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, because when you're in the middle of it, you're caught up in everything that's going on. Your own emotion is tied to all of that. And so it really does allow someone else to look, look at it with more uh, with, um, you know, just without any, any of the filters that you currently have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other thing I was going to say is that it also, I mean, if, if, if it did not go well, it sets up every other coaching consultant, <laughs> Uh, it could set them up for failure coming in if they're asked to come in because there's this memory 
this bad memory of what happened in the last instance. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great. Thank you, Josie. Yeah, and I'm seeing some similar um, 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 perspective uh, additions here, such as you know, added perspective helps helps us, us see you know blind spots. Uh, helps us get out of our own head and be objective than Josie, like, like you were saying as well. Yeah, great. Yeah, so um, I think many of the things that we've talked about are here, such as reveal blind spots, right? <laughs> um, so uh, thank you for, um, you know, for weighing in, in on this. All right, so I'll just leave you with a quote here. Uh, that a mind that is stretched by a new experience can never go back to its old dimensions. It's Oliver Wendell Holmes uh, Jr. And so I, I wonder for you today, how has your mind been stretched today? And uh, while you're adding that in, be glad to share with you a few uh, um, upcoming team coaching learning opportunities. Uh, and we can also do a, a Q&A or spend our time however else it is that Carrie would like for us to spend our time together. Well, and one thing I would add, Laura, you know, we get questioned a lot, like, what's the difference between mentor coaching and supervision? In your case, you know how to coach. It was not a competency issue on how to, you know, establish the agreement or how to facilitate client growth. This was not a competency of coaching challenge you were facing. You yeah, were nor, nor was it knowledge base. Yeah. Right. Nor exactly. was it not having the right tools. <laughs> right. You were well equipped as a coach, but you were facing a challenge that had you a bit gripped mm -hmm. and wondering and worrying and had all sorts of reactions. And that's the space for supervision is we'll always be at times working with clients where we notice something's coming up for me and it might get mm -hmm. in the way of my yeah. effectiveness. And these aren't necessarily conversations we can have in the coaching community of practice, because we have to hold confidentiality. Right. But we can take these yeah. conversations to our coaching supervisor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a powerful, powerful gift that we can give to ourselves uh, and others. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just wondering then, you know, how how in in any way has perhaps your mind been stretched today? Kind of what's What's one thing that might be standing out for you or that you might want to uh, explore further? Feel free to put it into chat or come off mic. Okay, let's see. The value of getting an independent perspective on a difficult situation. Thank you, Josie. And Suzanne, now I understand the benefits of supervision. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Glad that was helpful. Fantastic. All right. Well, uh, we can move into Q and A's, and then I'm, while we we do that, I can also uh, leave this up here for you as well. Um, let you know of some upcoming uh, team uh, team coach learning opportunities. So, um, Carrie, is this a good time to go into Q and A or? Yeah, well, and I'm just seeing some stuff in chat. Um, you know, right. again, Laura, I mentioned how the importance of reframing, seeing perspectives from all the different stakeholders. The team needed help to be successful, and it really wasn't about the GM. Um, and, you know, the value of reframing the problem, I think these are still examples of the mind getting stretched to see what is beyond what is presented. There are many options available. And we may need help seeing beyond the purview. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Where I did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and I think, Gwen, that's a really lovely comment. The case study is real. And I've certainly been in situations like that as well, where you have a secret about the client that the client doesn't yet know or have. And what does it mean to be effective in that space? Um, and when it's within that team, it just is so much more complicated and complex. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I think, Laura, you've done a great job of pointing out that space in between. Mm. That's, that's a tricky place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tricky place and, and a, that's the powerful place. It's the, the spaces in, in between coaching, coaching those connections, coaching the connections. Yeah, fantastic. 
Awesome. All right. Uh, uh, questions or you're welcome. Risa, Riza. Yeah. And Tara, everyone. Yeah. Great. Okay. Laura, did you end up taking the, the client on? Um, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, indeed. Um, and only after the sponsor had the conversation with the general manager. And then the next time, then with the general manager and I met, then um, he told me, he told me. And yeah, so that's, that's, that was the sequence. Mm -hmm. And was with that then, yeah, I agreed to move forward. Uh, and it was, it was a beautiful piece of work. I mean, my heart just went out to him. And you know what? I get goosebumps as I say it. He was so relieved. He was relieved. He was miserable. He was trying so hard, so hard, so hard. And there were organizational things and doing the interviews and all, I found some you know, organizational things that uh, were, were out of whack, that were totally out of his control that the organization needed to change. Um, yeah, in terms of rewards and incentives, you know, for people like, you know, salespeople just go sale when they're done. They're just like, you know, good luck team. I hope you can figure things out because I'm out of here. I'm going to buy my tractor and, you know, go mow my hay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it was a, it was a beautiful piece of, of work and um, yeah. Um, Laura, would your approach be the same if um, let's say you're, you're coaching one of the team members, maybe you're gathering information um, so that you can do more of a team coaching and they bring up information about maybe somebody in particular on the team. Um, are you at that point doing the same kind of practice and coaching, you know, between the connections um, or is that something that you bring collectively to the team to discuss? Typically it's more to, to the team to discuss, but when I'm doing the inter, inter interviews, interviews, um, in my approach and my bias are also the interviews are an intervention. Mm -hmm. So anytime we make a contact with anyone, it is some sort of an intervention, right? So it's not just about purely um, uh, gathering information. I very purposefully, for example, one of the questions I tend to ask towards the end of of an in interview, this type of, a, of an interview, you know, rapport has been built and, you know, first they might even say, well, you know, you can try to get me to open up, but well, they always do, <laughs> right? They just love, you know, so, you know, the, the connections there. So they're very open and they talk about all these things that are going on and saying and that person or this or that and pointing out there. And so, so then I'll, I'll, I'll ask something towards the end, something about, well, you know, it strikes me that, you know, we're, you know, that it, it takes, takes two to tango, right? That we're all in relationship and that, you know, we all have some, some, you know, responsibility for the results for which we, we have, right? And I go like, well, yeah. And I go, so, so what would you say is your contribution? Mm. And I just pause. And sometimes people blink and they'll sit back and they'll go, what? My, 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 mine? <laughs> That in and of itself is an intervention that starts loosening things up. And whether it is in the moment, they can start reflecting on that and sharing it, but then it starts loosening things up so that then when we do come together, or even if we're not coming together, it, you know, you cannot not be thinking about it. Mm -hmm. That in and of itself can be a useful intervention. Yeah, Andrew, in, yeah, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Great. Well, I see we're about five minutes till, Carrie. Yeah. You said you wanted about five minutes left at the end. Well, I just want to say thank you, um, Dr. Hauser, for just your, your depth of experience that you continue mm -hmm. to bring back to the coaching community of practice, not just on supervision, but team coaching, the variability and the nuances of those spaces. And for those of you who are listening in, who are still in that novice stage, of you know learning to become a coach the good news is is there's so many different ways you can continue to deepen in your practice as you advance in the world as you take on client work um so i did put in the chat box a link if you need the icf ceu please click on that link and just take a short evaluation 
And then we have another upcoming webinar coming up in October on the 19th. Um, another faculty member here at Fielding is doing a, a, a wonderful session. She's just written a book, Helene Seiler, and um, I put a link in chat if you'd like to register for that. And um, it was lovely to see all of you here today, and we hope you have a great week, and we'll see you at our next webinar. Yay, wonderful. Well, thank you, everyone. It's just been such a pleasure to, to be here and share with you and learn from you and, uh, you know, the world's a better place with you in it. So onward and, and upward, feel free to, uh, to stay in touch. All right. Be well, everyone.